I personally love world building. I think it's really fun, but I am not a huge fan of those questionnaires out there. I mean, they have some good aspects, but most of the time I just sit there going, oh, I have no idea, and it just really stumps me. So I prefer to do some of these hacks that I'm about to tell you about, and I'm really curious to see what you guys think, so let's dive in. The first hack is something I decided to name the party questions. You know, if you've ever been, well, usually when we were younger, invited to a party, and there's the uh, invite that says, who, what, where, when, why, how, yeah, that's six questions. The six party questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. So when you approach your story with the six party questions, it can be amazing. Let's use Evelyn's number as an example for this one. So Evelyn's number is based on our world. And so my first party question was to ask when. When did things change? When did history shift and become this story instead of what really happened? I decided that it would be during Y2K. So then of course my next question is, well, what happened in this version of the world's Y2K that was different from ours? And so I Googled what could have happened during Y2K and I kind of like wrote down all the things that could have gone wrong. Um, and that's a little bit skipping into my next hack, but we'll get there. And so I looked at this and I was like, well, what if? What if this did happen? So it's the what question again. What would have happened if those worries that people had and those fears would have come true? And then that goes to the question, how? How would those things, if they came true, how would they affect this world? So for example, people were worried, of course, that all the computers would crash and that it would affect things like the banks. Like you wouldn't be able to get to your money and you wouldn't be able to go and pay for food. So you wouldn't have any food, blah, blah, blah. There was tons of things that they were worried would go wrong. And so I asked myself, well, how would those things going wrong affect people? Like for example, if nobody could get to their money and it happened to take a really long time to fix it up. So nobody had any money, nobody had any food it would get like chaotic, right? Everybody would just overreact, things would just get messy, people would get into fights. And I was like, what if the governments got into fights? What if it affected everything globally? And so I just kept expanding on it further, like keeping asking the party questions, what if this happened? What if that happened? How would that affect this? Why would they do that? Would they react that way? and so on. These questions will lead you on like a rabbit trail that's much more specific to your world and much more focused and guided in what matters in your world than you would get from a questionnaire. And within these party questions is actually my second hack, which is to ask a really specific question that is, what if the worst happened? Using Evelyn's number as an example again, in this story, of course, Y2K is the the split from our world. So when I ask the question, what if the worst happened? I'm talking like not just a few countries got upset, but they went into all out war. The next world war happened, World War III happened. Um, what would be the worst that could happen in World War III? Well, maybe all the countries use all their bombs, like, and they actually have the bombs that they have been saying they have and that we weren't really sure. What if they all have the bombs? What if they have even worse bombs than we could imagine? What if these bombs do more than we could imagine? What if the very worst that could happen is it actually reshapes our entire world as we know it. It reshapes our planet and our world. And of course, I am not a science person. I don't know. Please don't come back and judge me. This is an imaginary world. So I went with what's the worst that could happen. It completely changes the planet. It completely changes our cultures. Everybody, all the people groups, like... Um, I focused on making Evelyn's number in Europe, actually. So generally, I have like some kind of Dutch names. I don't know if you guys notice. And I just have very like a European focus. I have um, some ship names that will hint at the British Navy, I think, if I'm saying that right. But anyway, asking myself what's the worst that could happen led to me thinking, well, what if like boundaries shift and change and all these different nations kind of come together and they form a new nation? And as I'm figuring out the worst that can happen and asking the party questions, I also use my third world building hack, which is to base things on reality. Let's continue with this example. As I was creating this world with just cultures and nations combined and it was like forming this new thing, of course I needed 
a new leader. And so I actually looked to Hitler and I did some research on that. I was a little worried about the FBI checking my search history during that time frame. And then I did research on Kim Jong-un. I don't know how to say his name out loud, but you know what I mean, the North Korea um, leader. And so I looked into and I based uh, my leader on reality. All these hacks kind of go together, by the way, because as I'm basing it on reality and looking at Hitler, for example, I'm still asking the party questions. Well, why? Why did they follow him? Why was he so convincing? How can I make my leader so convincing as well? How can I pull from things that he did and blah, blah, blah. But my fourth world building hack is to mix reality so that you're not you know, just copying something and it's like expected and people are like, well, that's predictable. You don't want that. So mixing realities, two, three, four, five, doesn't really matter how many, can really bring that element of surprise and that twist and that just like people are like, well, I recognize that, but also I don't and I like it. Let's use Pearl's number as an example here. And of course, I don't want to give away spoilers, so I'm not going to say too much. But there are many cultures in this book. I have them traveling all across a bunch of different territories. So I got to world build multiple times. And one of my favorites, I won't name who they are, but you'll figure it out after you read it, is uh, this group of people who I based on, first of all, Texas cowboys, like a cowboy feel, and then also motorcycle gangs. And I know I talked about this already a little bit, but that was such a fun mixture to create this people group who was like both cowboy feel, but also they're like a motorcycle gang. Oh, I don't want to give away any spoilers because I'm really good at accidentally spoiling things. So I'm going to move on to my fifth world building hack, which is to get specific. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to use Pearl's number again because I can. Um, in this book, they travel across a bunch of different territories. So Ah, again, without giving anything away, I gotta think carefully as I talk about this. Um, but I'm gonna talk about something really generic that doesn't affect the story, so you won't be too, um, you won't be spoiled at all, I don't think, by this. But there are uh, like multiple territories, and so as they go through each territory, I thought to myself, what are some things that I can use to make this very clearly different? Okay, so one of the first examples is the roads. The first culture that they're in is very neat and orderly and very, very, very modern and put together. So of course the roads are going to be pretty perfect, pretty brand new, very well kept up. Then when they leave the territory, they go into a new territory that is very wild. It's a wild culture. And so the roads are going to reflect that. It's going to be not maintained. Um, maybe even you can't see it sometimes. It sort of just gets like so overgrown in certain places. Then I have another culture that's more secretive and just keeps to themselves and more unknown, mysterious. So their roads are windy and kind of, you know, the next section of the road is out of sight. It's around the bend. So it kind of reflects their culture. And then the most modern and the most advanced and just complicated culture that they reach towards the end is like it's reflected in their roads by how their roads are just like overlapping each other and it's like up in the sky and it's just like crisscrossing and very complicated just like them. Another example is speech. And of course I'm basing this on reality as well because if you travel around the United States right now, you're gonna notice a ton of different accents. So I definitely brought that in and I got really specific about in each territory, what does their accent sound like and getting specific um, really just means like choosing a thing and focusing on it and like how is it unique in your world. And that leads to my sixth writing hack, which is that you can use the world questionnaires to help you get those specifics. They are helpful. I just say don't take them like religiously. Just pick and choose what works for your story because it can actually be helpful to use a questionnaire to give you ideas, again, for getting specific, but also just ideas for... Um, just things that you wouldn't consider because it kind of is outside of your scope of what you normally deal with. I'm trying to think of examples in my books here. I would say actually in both of my books, um, world building questionnaires help me to think of climate, for example. So I'm just not like 
it's not my strength to think about climate. So when you come across things in a questionnaire like climate and you're like, oh yeah, I should probably consider that it helps you build that into your story. And then my seventh world building hack is to not info dump, never info dump. I remember like I had a ton of that info that I talked about from Evelyn's number about the Y2K and the bombs and this happened and this happened and actually I deleted all of that because it's a total info dump. You don't need to know it for the story. You really need to know very little. Um, I needed to know it so that I could create a believable world and it's really good for you to know it and maybe figure that out outside of the writing. But when it comes to the writing, never info dump, like avoid that at all costs, like just get to the story, the heart of it. What is your story about? And let the world kind of weave its way into it on its own. Those are my seven world building hacks. Of course, there's tons more out there. This is not comprehensive at all. That's why I wanted to call it a hack video instead of, you know, world building the whole thing because I don't know the whole thing and I'm still learning just like you guys but I have a lot of fun using these hacks and I hope that they help you out let me know in the comments if you appreciate them uh, definitely also check out in the links my patreon page my giveaway going on right now I'll flash a picture it's still going on check out the information for my live stream release which is in a couple days I'm so excited this book is gonna be out in the world I should tell you guys about the back should I tell you about the back? Not related to world building, but I kind of want to. So these circles that you see on the back, both of these circles on the back are actually something in the book. That's all I can say. And I really hope you enjoy the story. I cannot wait to see what you think of this book. I hope that you guys will leave reviews and enjoy it. I'm so excited to celebrate with you guys in the live stream. Um, if you want to ring the bell next to the subscribe button, subscribe to of course if you haven't, but ringing the bell will actually let you know when the video goes live in case I'm a little bit technically challenged and forget to post it and let you know on other social media. I want you guys to be there. I don't want you to miss anything because we're gonna have tons of giveaways, tons of games, tons of cool authors there. It's gonna be so fun and all the information again is below go check it out like this video thumbs up it <laughs> if you liked it and i'll talk to you guys again soon bye